back to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. Guys, 85% of you are watching my content but you're not subscribing. You need to hit, you need to hit like this, hit that subscribe button so I can keep making videos like this for you guys. I love creating this content and having subscribers is essentially what keeps the channel going. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. Today I'm continuing the pharmaceutical series where I'm talking about sales and marketing, AKA commercialization of pharmaceutical products. So make sure you stick around and watch the entire video. The commercialization division is essentially responsible for marketing and getting the pharmaceutical company to make money basically. So that's where all pharmaceutical sales reps are housed under and that's the same thing for pharma as well as medical device. All sales reps are housed under that commercialization marketing division. Within the marketing and sales division, obviously you're gonna have like a director of sales who's responsible for all the sales reps and sales reps are assigned different regions. So there will be one sales rep who might get California. I mean, it really does depend on the size of the pharmaceutical company, but they could get California or they can get the whole West Coast. They can get Nebraska or they can get all the middle states. They may get the South, they may get one state, two state, they may get Hawaii, whatever. And basically their responsibility is to meet with primary care providers and inform them on the drug. Now I know if you guys have watched my other video where I talk about medical affairs, clinical affairs, I said that people within medical affairs and clinical affairs talk to physicians as well. Remember guys, people in medical affairs and clinical affairs are trained healthcare professionals as well. MDs, PharmDs, some sort of doctorate, PhD. They can engage in scientific discussions with primary care providers. They can educate in a different way of how a drug works from like a mechanistic level with primary care providers. Sales reps cannot do that. They are not allowed to do that. They are only allowed to talk about what is on the label of an approved product. They can't talk about anything else off that label. That's why regulatory and legal and compliance kind of butt heads with sales and marketing because sales is trying to do everything they can to get the drug prescribed. But at the same time, people in regulatory, legal and compliance know that there's still laws we have to follow. You can't just talk about anything whenever you want for the sake of making a sale. So sales reps are responsible for meeting with healthcare providers and that's why you'll see sales rep positions. If you try and apply for a sales rep job, they make a lot of money. But what people don't understand about being a sales rep, and I'm gonna do an interview with one of my friends who's actually a medical device sales rep, is they have the lifestyle of like a surgeon where they're always on the road, they're always traveling, they're always meeting with people. So yeah, you make a lot of money, but you don't really get time to spend with people you care about because you're always is working. So I'll make that another video and I won't go too in depth of what they make and what their lifestyle is like, but they follow under that director of sales. Then there's director of marketing and they might be responsible for like some of the commercials we see. We see a lot of pharmaceutical commercials on TV. They may work with an outside source. They may get like a different vendor to help produce the commercial, but marketing will work with them on the commercial or billboards that you see or brochures, patient brochures, healthcare provider brochures. Different things of that nature would fall under the marketing house. As well as like, you see the packaging for like Advil, I'm just gonna say random drugs that most people know, like for Advil, Pneumovax, I mean even the COVID vaccine, when it becomes more commercialized, I think you might see marketing come in to play a little bit more. But we can even look at different medications like the HPV vaccination, there was marketing in play for that, commercial went to play for that. So if you're someone who is a business major or you did marketing or community communications and you're interested in science, it could be possible for you to take that degree and work within the pharmaceutical space as it relates to marketing. Um, marketing also has to kind of report to legal and compliance because you can't say anything that's too misleading. Those commercials are heavily regulated and the FDA does have a lot of rules and laws on what can and cannot be said and marketing still has to follow those rules. There is always a hand of regulatory in every single aspect or legal and compliance, same thing. When it comes to any thing within the pharmaceutical industry. So there is gonna be someone from regulatory working with the marketing team and that may be their day to day. So exploring the world of regulatory, and I know I, I talk about it so much, but there's a lot of opportunities to be in every aspect of a pharma company. Those are the main two um, legs to stand on when it comes to sales and marketing. And of course, you know, the director of sales, director of marketing, you probably have VPs and things, and things of that nature. And then you probably have people who like associates on the associate level. So if you're interested in getting into a 
marketing um, as it relates to working in a pharmaceutical company, you can definitely look at on the website of pharmaceutical companies and look within their commercial and marketing divisions or go on LinkedIn and look up different titles for marketing and sales in pharmaceutical companies, connect with people who already are in those roles. I have done a little bit of marketing and commercialization, but not enough to really to, to speak to it. Another thing that I wanted to add on is the fact that under different models, again, it depends on how big or how small the company is. When I worked for smaller companies, a lot of different things were housed under just one title. So we, under the commercial and marketing sector, we would do focus groups. And pharma companies probably do focus groups to see how patients respond to the label. They actually do focus groups. How they respond to the label, how they respond to different things. And that's actually where public health kind of comes in. I don't know if marketing can solely by themselves have a focus group and be the moderator of a focus group, but, and a lot of times they may outsource it. But I would have the ability to do a focus group at the company that I worked for, and I was testing out patient educational materials, which kind of falls under the commercialization aspect because you talk about the different medications that are available for the disease state. So my educational brochure was for sickle cell disease, and I don't think I have it anymore, but if I do, it'll be somewhere in this video at some point. But yeah, I think that's the gist of sales and marketing and commercialization. I think it's a great opportunity in understanding how marketing works when it comes to pharmaceutical products. Some people may not like that. They may not like that pharmacy is commercialized in any way, but a lot of people spend time looking at their phones and on TV. And I think pharmaceutical companies had to shift with the time in marketing to educate patients from a different lens. And you know, marketing is important in every aspect. So if you're interested in science, this might be something for you. That concludes the segment of this video. I hope you guys found it informative. If you have any questions about sales and marketing or commercialization. Make sure you leave those comments down below and keep commenting video ideas so I can keep making videos like this. Again, this series or these videos were kind of birthed in the comments by you guys. Again, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and until next time guys, bye.